Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship, and it's good to see you here today. Please stand in body or spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And we begin with, Lord, let my heart be good soil. You may be seated. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We continue with Open the Eyes of My Heart. Our gospel lesson today comes from St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. 
And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. A bent spoon. Now this one's overdone just a little bit. But how many of you have bent a spoon when you go digging into the ice cream? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you usually get in trouble for it then, don't you? I still get in trouble for that once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you just hate when that happens. You know, it really makes the spoon useless. A spoon that's bent out of shape isn't of much good for anything. Well, people sometimes get bent out of shape, too. I have even been accused of getting bent out of shape from time to time. Old age, disease, injury, just our point of views may cause us to get out of shape. And sometimes, literally, our body does get out of shape. Perhaps you know someone who cannot straighten their back when they stand or when they walk. Their bodies are bent out of shape, maybe like this spoon. Well, sometimes a person gets angry about something. Many times it's about something that's really not that important. When that happens, we call it getting bent out of shape. Have you ever heard someone say to a person who is angry, don't get all bent out of shape? Our Bible lesson this morning, or this afternoon rather, is about two people who were all bent out of shape. The first person in our lesson had a body that was bent out of shape. One Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, and as he was teaching, he saw this woman who had been crippled for 18 years. And of course, back in those days, when the length of your life wasn't that long anyhow, 18 years, I mean, that was a big, big part of her life. She was crippled. And the Bible story tells us that she was bent over and was unable to straighten up. And then what did Jesus do? He healed her. When Jesus saw the woman, he said, woman, you are set free from your sickness. And can you imagine what that meant to that woman? You are set free. Not only could she stand up now, but what other freedoms did she now have? Like Pastor Mark mentioned this morning, a lot of times we, we get into name calling, you know, and this lady may have been called names throughout her 18 years, you know. That was gone now. That was gone. She could look up in the sky. She could look up in the sky and see the Space station that Chris and I went out in the yard and saw that last night. She was free to do so many things because of the miracle that Jesus had performed. Well, then there's a second person in the story. The Bible tells us that the leader of the synagogue became very angry because Jesus had healed the woman on the Sabbath. He said, there are six days for work, 
So come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. Jesus answered the leader of the synagogue, you hypocrite, don't you untie your donkey on the Sabbath and lead them to get a drink? Even so, it was necessary for me to heal this woman who had been suffering for over 18 years. Sort of funny in life how sometimes we do take care of our animals a little bit better than we take care of our friends, our family, the people around us. And then the whole idea of why do they come to the synagogue? Why do we come to this church on Sundays? To be healed. To be healed, to be strengthened so we can get through that next week. And that's what Jesus was concerned about. He was concerned more about healing than he was about keeping the rules. Rules are good, but people are more important. We should remember that the next time that we start to get all bent out of shape. When someone bends the rules a little bit to help someone who's in need, maybe that's okay. Think about bending the rules and helping those around us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that you taught us that helping people is more important than always keeping the rules. Amen. Would you please stand as we continue with the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for this holy meal. May it help us to be more loving and to follow you more faithfully. Amen. Heavenly Father, Thank you for friends and neighbors and family. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Wonderful God, thank you for the trees and animals, for the sun and moon, and for the whole world you have made. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we know that you hear our prayers, and we ask you to take care of the people we love. Thank you for loving us. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Earlier, Pastor Mark said these words over the wine and the bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. 
as we share Holy Communion, all who believe that Christ is truly present in the bread and wine are welcome to commune here. If you want an alternative from the wine and the bread, we do have gluten-free wafers and uh, grape juice. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Please stand in body or spirit. The blessing of the Lord Almighty, the blessing of Christ, 
the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our sending hymn is Bind Us Together. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life. And we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 for the contemporary worship and at 10.30 for the traditional worship service. Thursday evenings at 7.30 we have our praise service. And the fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30, we have our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio. No gift is too small and will help us with our mission of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.